Uh, aloha and welcome to the Hawaii State Senate Committee on Health. I'm Senator Jared Kilhokalole, chair of the committee. I'm also joined uh, at the moment by my fellow health committee member, Senator Joy San Buenaventura. Uh, also uh, on the health committee are my vice chair, Senator Roz Baker, Senator Sharon Moriwaki, and Senator Kurt Favela. Uh, this is our 1 p.m. Wednesday, January 26th agenda, the first hearing of the Senate Committee on Health for this 2022 session. So welcome everyone. Uh, just a few notes, this meeting is being streamed live on YouTube. Uh, in the event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Friday, January 28th at 1.10 p.m. and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For testifiers participating remotely, uh, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. So just hang with us if you're on. Uh, you will have two minutes to share your testimony. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn to testify, we may move on, uh, but we will try to come back, uh, come back to you if we're able to. Uh, you know, we appreciate your understanding and uh, remind you that the committee has received your written testimony. I have reviewed uh, all of the testimony submitted. Uh, we also have received late testimony that we will continue to receive through the committee hearing uh, and ensure that it will be uh, logged for the record uh, along with this bill on the state legislature's uh, bill status page. Uh, I'll be reading from a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure uh, we apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe your name. Uh, if you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website. You will find the link on the status page for the measure. This is a 90 minute uh, health committee hearing. And so that's in part why uh, we, uh, I've chosen as the health committee chair to put in place the two minute uh, testimony limit for live oral testimony like I said, we've received your written testimony. So if you'd like to summarize your remarks or add anything new, uh, then I welcome you to, but we wanna make sure we can get through our entire agenda. We have a second agenda after this that has a significant amount of testimony. And I intend to vote on these bills today so that we don't have to roll these agendas to a later date. So on that note, we'll start with our first bill on the agenda, Senate Bill 2022 relating to hearing, hearing and vision program. This amends the hearing and vision program statute to increase the early identification of children with hearing or vision loss by establishing consistent protocols for hearing and vision screening and follow-up, screener training, and data collection for quality improvement. Uh, first up in support, we have the Department of Health. Good afternoon, my name is Matthew Shim. I'm Chief of the Family Health Services Division. Uh, we stand on our testimony in strong support and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Kaiser Permanente in support. Good afternoon. Good morning, Chair and Vice Chair John Kermitz on behalf of Kaiser Permanente. We stand in support. I'll stand on my testimony and available to ask it, uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much. That's Thank all you. the live testimony uh, I see here. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify on this measure SB 2022? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to note the written remarks all in support from Early Childhood Action Strategy, the Executive Office on Early Learning, Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks, and the State Council on Developmental Disabilities. Uh, so since again, that's, uh, those are all the testifiers. Members, are there any questions? Okay, we'll move to the second me uh, measure on this 1 p.m. agenda. <clears throat> excuse me, that's SB 2024, relating to newborn hearing screening. This amends the hearing and vision program, uh, I'm sorry, this requires diagnostic audiologic evaluation results of newborn hearing screening evaluations or infants who, whose hearing status changes uh, to be provided to the Department of Health. Uh, first testifier we have in sport is the Department of Health. Good afternoon again, Matt Shim. Chief of Family Health Services Division. Uh, we stand on our testimony in strong support and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, next in support, Kaiser Permanente. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Kaiser stands, in, uh, stands on his testimony in support. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much. That's all the in-person testimony we've received. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to note the written testimony uh, of the following organizations all in support, the Executive Office on Early Learning, the State Council on Developmental Disabilities, Early Childhood Action Strategy, Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks, and Eleanor McDonald. Members, are there any questions for our live testifiers? Okay, seeing none, with uh, the indulgence of the members, I think I'd like to move right into decision-making on these two me measures. Any questions or comments? Okay, great. I see my vice chair looks ready. Uh, all members present. Okay, great. So for the first measure, SB 2022, relating to hearing and vision program, uh, the recommendation here is to pass this measure out unamended. Members, any comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, Vice Chair SB 2021 passing unamended. Vice Chair, you are on mute. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Uh, Chair Keo Hokololi? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura? Aye. Thank you. Senator Favela. Aye. Measure your rec uh, Senator, your uh, recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, the second measure, SB 2024, relating to newborn hearing screening. Uh, the recommendation here is to pass this measure out with technical non-substantive amendments, uh, still as an SD1. Uh, members, any questions? Okay, Vice Chair. Uh, Voting on SB 2024, uh, SD1. Uh, to pass with amendments, uh, Chair? Uh, aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Chair, your recommendation's been adopted. Thank you very much, members. We do have a 1.10 p.m. agenda, and uh, we finished this agenda early. So great job, Health Committee. We will go into a recess and reconvene at 1.10 p.m. with our uh, a joint committee hearing with the Agriculture and uh, Environment Committee. Recess. Good afternoon and welcome back to our, excuse me, 1.10 p.m. Wednesday, January 26th joint agenda between the Senate, the Hawaii State Senate Committee on Health and the Committee on Agriculture and Environment. Again, I'm Jarrett uh, Keoho Kalole, Chair of the Health Committee. Uh, I'm also joined by my co-chair, uh, Senator Mike Gabbard. Senator Gabbard, would you like to uh, introduce your committee? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I am Mike Gabbard, uh, my sixth year of, uh, this is our first AEN uh, committee hearing. So uh, this is my sixth year as the chair of the Ag Environment Committee. I represent District 20 in West Oahu. And my vice chair, uh, I'd like my members to just briefly introduce themselves, uh, Senator Nishihara. Or Senator Rose, anybody can just jump in. Yeah, this is Carl, Carl Rhodes. I represent District 13, which is Chinatown in the Valley up to the top of the poly. Nice to be here. Mahalo. Thank you, Carl. Senator Nishihara? Yeah, I'm Senator Nishihara, Clarence Nishihara, representing Pearl City, Waipahu, District 17, and your vice chair. Thank you, Clarence. Also, uh, Senator Ocasio. Is Senator Ocasio in or Senator Aloha. Favela? Thank you, Chair. Um, I am Laura Ocasio, and I represent District 1, Hilo, Greater Hilo area. Thank you. And I don't see Senator Favela, so go right ahead, uh, Chair. Senator Favela, District 19. Oh, there he is. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you, Chair. Uh, well, you know what? Before we get started, why don't we do that as well? Uh, we got started a little quickly on our 1 p.m. agenda. So uh, if the members can go around, again, I'm Jared Kiohokalole. 
Senate District 24, I represent Kailua and Kaneohe. Vice Chair? Sorry. Vice Chair, you're on mute. Oh, same thing. Uh, aloha, I'm Senator Roz Baker. I represent South and West Maui, uh, Senate District uh, 6. Aloha, I'm Joy San Buenaventura. I represent um, the Big Island District of Puna, Senate District 2, and East Ka'u. Aloha, I'm Sharon Moriwaki. I represent District 12, which is Kaka'ako, Waikiki, Makali, Mo'ili, Ili. And the final um, member, uh, oh, Senator Carfirello, <laughs> District 19. <laughs> Who's going to introduce himself a lot in the next couple of days. So our one and only bill on this agenda is Senate Bill 2172 relating to underground fuel storage tanks. This prohibits issuance of future underground fuel storage tanks within one half mile of an aquifer beginning July 1st, 2022. It prohibits operation of and renewal of underground fuel storage tank permits located within one half mile from an aquifer beginning January 1st, 2050. It also defines underground fuel storage tanks as any fuel tank with a capacity of 100 gallons or more. Uh, we have a significant number of testifiers uh, who have signed up to testify live. Uh, we have a two minute uh, in-person testimony rule that we're gonna try to stick to because uh, this, uh, uh, this hearing block ends at 2.30 and I intend to vote this measure out today. If we run over time, we need to, um, defer decision making on this until a later date and I would prefer not to do that. So we are going to try to stick to the two minute testimony limit. For all the members who uh, of the public who are here to testify live, we have received your written comments already. I have read through all of them. And so uh, if you care to summarize or add anything new then the two minutes is uh, your opportunity to do so. So let's start with the Department of Health offering comments. Hi, good afternoon, Chairs Keo Kahole and Gabbard and members of the committee. My name is Kathleen Ho. I am the Deputy Director of Environmental Health. Along with me is Joanna Sito, who is <clears throat> the Environmental Health Division Administrator, and Lene Ichinotsubo, who is the Acting Branch Chief of the Solid and Hazardous Waste Branch. We appreciate the and uh, we appreciate and support the intent of this measure, and we also offer comments we will be available to answer any questions if you might have. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Kathy. Next, we have the Board of Water Supply in support. Um, good afternoon, chairs and committee members. My name is Erwin Kawata with the Board of Water Supply. On behalf of uh, Mr. Ernest Lau, Manager and Chief Engineer, we stand on our written testimony in support of this measure, along with some amendments we recommend to, uh, for the bill. And we may, uh, I will be here for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Hawaii State Teachers Association in support. Laverne Moore. I am Laverne Moore speaking on behalf of Osa Tui Jr., president of the High State Teachers Association. We believe every school drinking water should meet environmental protection agency requirements for clean water. Further, school water should be tested every six months and irregularities should be reported immediately. What's important is the community came together to help those schools impacted. But what is happening, the teachers are so concerned that with COVID and tainted water, how are we supposed to get our students up to standards? It is important that we deal with this issue to provide safe water, not only for our keikis, our teachers, the public schools, but also for everyone who lives in Hawaii. We ask for your support for this bill. Water is life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Rebecca Garrison for the Hawaii Peace, for Hawaii Peace and Justice in support. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. My name is Rebecca Garrison and I'm a water drinker who calls Oahu home. I'm also a member of Oahu Water Protectors and a community organizer for Hawaii Peace and Justice. Thank you for prioritizing the protection of the island's most precious resource, clean, unpolluted drinking water. Hawaii Peace and Justice strongly supports with amendments SB 2172, which seeks to protect Oahu's sole source aquifer from fuel contamination. 
Please amend the measure by one, removing reference to the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facil facility in the preamble to avoid potential federal preemption challenges. Two, amending the proposed new definition of quote, underground fuel storage tank, end quote, to apply to facilities with filled constructed tanks or with a capacity over 100,000 gallons. And three, ensuring no permit may be issued or renewed for an underground fuel storage tank and that no underground fuel storage tank may be operated after the end of this year for a facility located Malka of the underground injection control line. Please pass SB 2172 with the above amendments. Ole Kavai, water is life. We all have a responsibility to the present and future generations to protect the island's source of life, water. To emphasize once again, Hawaii Peace and Justice strongly supports the immediate draining of the tanks at Kapukaki, also widely known as Red Hill, and the permanent decommissioning of the entire Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility. History has proven that the Navy cannot protect the water from the leaking fuel in its antiquated fuel storage system. This crisis is real and we know it. This crisis has not been resolved and we know it. The military's negligence to adequately maintain its decaying fuel farm of 20 corroding fuel tanks, holding 200 million gallons of fuel, a mere 100 feet above Oahu's sole source aquifer, is a burden that none of us asked for. Thank you much very less much. Kapukaki. Thank Drain you very much. Tank. Next, we have the Hawaii Thank Public you. Health Institute in support. Okay, next, the Hawaii Petroleum Marketers Association offering comments. Uh, Mr. Lee, we cannot hear you. You don't appear to be on mute. Turner looks like he's having technical difficulties. Okay, Mr. Lee, we're going to come back to you, but I'm going to move on to Bronson Azama for the Honolulu Youth Commission in support. Uh, aloha mai kako. Um, so nice to see all of you folks, uh, many familiar faces. Um, but just um, in regards to the, um, as chair of the Honolulu Youth Commission, I'll just stand by my written comments um, and speak as an individual. Um, so I'd like to stand in support for the previous speaker, um, Rebecca Garrison, and for all that they had to say. Um, one of the things I did notice in the bill on page two was 19 through 21 was um, from provided that a permit to um, few storage tanks. I feel like that should be removed. Um, it's really time, um, as like my written says, that we really, for not just this decision, but for all decisions, we move from this mindset of accountability one of numbers, one of costs, one of value, to that of how it once was for our kupuna, one of accountability. Um, this accounting mindset, you know, it's just even simple math too for that. Um, just understanding that water equals life. And the Navy is arguing that the cost is surmounting and even that it's value of those facilities is that we need that fuel in the event of war to protect said life. But no water, no life, no need for fuel. It's not a hard decision. Um, and I'd really like to implore you all to take that mindset of accountability because as our kupuna teach us, our decisions impact not just now, but all of time for this decision of water and its use and not just it as a resource, but the understanding of it as a source of life for not just the life now, but for all generations to come. We have a real responsibility for our children's children's children and all the generations that will come after. And many of the testifiers today I know will be speaking um, not only for the benefit of the generation to come, but also um, in honor of all those who came before us and the knowledge that they have provided us to say eole kawai. Um, so we ask that these facilities be shut down now, like I asked for the amendment to remove that section. We shouldn't have loopholes to really allow these facilities to last any longer. They need to be shut down. No more permitting to allow this type of use on our aina. Mahalo. Um, we are people of the ha, the vai, and the e. That's all I'm going to say from there. Mahalo. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next for Faith Action, uh, Susan Gorman Chang in support. Yes, thank you. Mahalo for hearing this bill. I'm Susan Gorman Chang. I'm chair of the Environmental Justice Task Force for Faith Action for Community Equity. And we are an organization made up of 24 member organizations whose faith traditions respect creation care. We are in strong support of this bill and with the following amendments, very similar to uh, Rebecca Garrison's. 
One, removing reference to the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility in the preamble to avoid potential federal preemption challenges. Number two, amending the proposed new definition of underground fuel storage tank to apply to facilities with fuel constructed tank or with capacity over 100,000 gallons. And three, ensuring that no permit may be issued or renewed for an underground fuel storage tank and that no underground fuel storage tank may be operated after the end of this year for a facility located the underground injection control line. Um, so again, we're in strong support of this bill. Thank you for hearing it. I'm very glad to see this is um, coming up. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Aloha chairs, aloha members. Uh, my name is Melody Aduha. I am co-chair of the Environmental Caucus along with Alan Burdick. And uh, we are in support. However, we do request that the facilities uh, be subject to decommissioning. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, we stand by the four Ds, which would be defuel, dismantle, decommission, and decontaminate. Uh, with regards to this bill itself, we'd like to say that the one mile or one half mile be extended to one mile. And you have to take into consideration, how do you really judge where the perimeters or outer perimeters of the aquifer is located? It's contingent on, on rain flow, drawdown, tidal influences, archeological as well as topographical conditions. Uh, the second thing that we'd like to say is about uh, the provision on repairing and replacing. Again, someone had mentioned, we'd also would like to add regular inspections. And on um, page three regarding the date of uh, January 1st, 2050, would like that to be advanced to July 1st, 2022. Please note also that the state of Hawaii is to be 100% renewable energy by year 2045. So this 2050 is actually, uh, shouldn't even be available since we're not supposed to be using any gas at all, any fuel. Okay, and the next thing is that we would add, we'd like to have this applicable to all underground storage tanks, not just fuel, because there's other tanks that would be a danger to the environment, those that contain solvents like in laundry facilities, fertilizers, in agriculture and farms, molasses and bakeries. So we'd like it to be applied to all underground fuel tanks. And finally, regarding the 100 gallons or more, we'd like that cut out and, and not have that limitation because someone might build a 50 gallon tank and put five, five Camilla, 50 gallon tanks. Your tank. time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Have, Thank you, members. Next, we have the Sierra Club of Hawaii, Wayne Tanaka, in support. Good afternoon, Chair Kehoe Kalole, uh, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Baker, and Nishihara, and members of the committees. Uh, Wayne Tanaka for the Sierra Club of Hawaii. We uh, support this measure with amendments, which we have provided. Uh, this is an opportunity for your committees and for the legislature to demonstrate the decisive leadership needed to protect our water and our way of life from further catastrophic harm. Um, I'll just you know, add on to our testimony that you know, there are two kinds of leadership, I think, that we've been seeing over these past few months. Uh, you know, there's leaders in character who protect their people from harm, who listen to their concerns, keep them informed, and try to give them the best opportunities to succeed despite adversity. Uh, these are leaders who are willing, if necessary, to take brave, to make the brave uh, uh, and sometimes difficult decisions to do these things. Um, we also have leaders, leaders in title only. And these leaders are those who ignore their people's concerns, you know, gaslight them, blame others rather than admit their own limitations, act like they have everything under control, even as the world is clearly falling apart as it inevitably does. Uh, the Navy has demonstrated one kind of leadership in its handling of this Red Hill facility for years, if not decades. You can probably guess which. Um, I think you have, but on the other hand, I think you all have in many ways demonstrated the other kind, leadership and character. Um, just watching how so many of you have been working throughout this pandemic, trying, trying to figure out the best you can, how to keep your constituents safe, keep them informed, our way of life intact to the extent possible. I know that if you knew what was coming with COVID and the harms it would inflict on us and our society, I am 100% certain if you had the means to prevent COVID from happening, you have done everything in your power to do so. And so now you have the opportunity to demonstrate leadership and character once again. We can prevent a disaster uh, that for us here in Oahu may be just as catastrophic and life-changing, society-changing as COVID and for far, far longer. 
And that is by preventing the storage of massive quantities of fuel above our drinking water supply immediately and once and for all. And so we have, we have offered amendments that will help you to, to do this. Uh, please, we urge you to consider and incorporate them uh, in this measure. And I'm happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Right on time too, I really appreciate that. Next we have uh, Susan Piccolo Davis. Correct me if I got that wrong, please, in support. Hi, Susan, you are on mute. How are you? You're good now, please proceed. Oh, okay, I'd like to uh, testify in support of this bill. One of the things that's very important for everybody to know is that we have no idea of how many families have been affected and have been moved to Waikiki, not knowing when they're gonna get back home. On top of that, there are parents now saying that up until December 17th, there were buses provided for the students to get to and from school. That has stopped. These are important things to know about what's happening with families and the effects of what happened with Red Hill. Not necessarily right now what happened isn't important, just remember the families. I read this morning that Ige says he's not ready to shut the tanks down at present. He's waiting for more Navy reports and the Navy is part of our economy. Take that into consideration. I don't agree with that. Also, the Navy engineers had said earlier that the Peninsula water came from the Waiava shaft this is Pearl City Peninsula homes. Currently today, they reported at 650 parts per billion, exceeding the 200 parts per billion. But they said earlier that that water came from the Wyava shaft, which they said had no detectable levels of fuel or petroleum and was unaffected by the Red Hill leak. So in reading the newspapers, in listening to what's going on, in the Board of Education meetings, which I provided in my written testimony, all the parents' testimonies at that me meeting that were sent in, written, so that you can hear from the parents and the teachers exactly what is affecting them while this continues to much. go on. Your time is Thank up. you. Gonna, I appreciate that. We're gonna move back to Mr. Lee. I believe his audio is working again. Do we have him? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Ahead. Yes. Awesome, thank you. Hello, committee chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. Uh, I'm Eric Lee, here to testify on behalf of Eric Wright, president of the Hawaii Petroleum Marketers Association. Mm -hmm. Our members include individuals and companies that operate as independent marketers, jobbers, or distributors who buy, sell, and distribute fuel products to consumers. We stand by written testimony with concerns that this bill, as currently drafted, will have unintended consequences on member retail stations and convenience stores. Uh, thank you for allowing me to testify on behalf of the Hawaii Petroleum Market Association. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you very much. And thanks for uh, your patience and hanging with us there. Uh, next, we have Colonel Ann Wright in support. Thank you. Yes, I'm a retired Army Colonel, 29 years in the military. I'm uh, a part of Veterans for Peace and Hawaii Peace and Justice. And I really thank the committee for having these hearings and to be uh, very concerned about all of these under, underground tanks. I mean, as a, uh, as a retired military, I hate to say this, but uh, the old Navy is slow rolling us on this. We can see that, that uh, they're not even gonna give us the full report uh, that they've been working on uh, that's due on February 2nd. They're only gonna give the public a summary report. So they're not being transparent. We can see that for sure. Uh, I'm very concerned, as a previous testifier uh, mentioned, uh, you know, that the governor is backpedaling on this thing, that he's not saying, yes, we need to permanently close these things down. Uh, we all know how, how dangerous they are and that they will leak. The, all the reports that we've had before have said there's going to be a, if you don't think this, this leak was catastrophic, that did in the water supply of 93,000, the next ones are going to be even worse. And even the timetables that we're looking at, the earliest, the way I look at it, that any sort of defueling uh, can start taking place is almost five, five months from now. When you really look at the, 
uh, the report the, that the assessment report that's going to be done by a contractor April 30th for that. Then Department of Health takes that over. Then 30 days after that. So we're really looking first of July before any defueling can can will take place, and that's dangerous for us. So thanks, committee. Keep after it. Don't let the the Navy slow roll us on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, we have Deborah Ward in support. Mara Coe in support. Matthew Geyer in support. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Thank you for hearing this measure. And um, uh, I am standing in support of this measure. I'm, I'm again, I'm Matt Geyer. I'm with the Environmental Justice Task Force, Director of Public Outreach, uh, but I am testifying as an individual today. And once again, it's so important that we that we pass this, but it's kind of too late. Our water has already been poisoned. As you heard from the lady who's describing what happened at the elementary schools, it's, it's too late. So there was people telling, uh, testifying for this 10 years ago that we need to shut down these tanks. And it's, it's gonna be the same with climate change too. If we don't do something now, we're gonna be reaping the rewards of our inaction later. So thank you again for uh, hearing this measure, I stand in strong support. Um, and please uh, look to the future. Aloha. Thank you very much. Meliana Meyer in support. Okay, Samuel Mitchell in support. Yep, um, summarize. Uh, there's some problems with the bill. Um, the, because it only uh, talks about new tanks and that it, the permits will be go on to 2050, the bill doesn't do anything about the Red Hill facility. That needs to be changed. Um, I used to be a maintenance mechanic at Pearl Harbor Shipyard for 38 years. And I was president of the machinist union, which represents the workers at the uh, public work center, Pearl Harbor. And they do the repairs on Red Hill. And I myself had tried to go and fix the problems in the facility back in 1998. And we refused um, entrance into the facility, even though I had security clearance and was working for the Navy. So this problem has been around for years. It's been a manning problem. It's been a facility maintenance problem. It's across the board. So it needs to be looked at and it needs to be discussed with people that have insight, insights of what's going on. Um, if anybody's got questions, I'll be around later on. I can probably answer some of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Dave Mullenix in support. Dave, we have you back, but you are on mute. Okay, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, on behalf of uh, our revolution's 5,000 members and supporters, we are in support of this legislation. Um, and uh, we stand by the amendments made by Sierra Club and, and we stand on our testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next we have Anna Chua in support. Hi, thank you. My name is Anna Chua. I'm a resident of Mo'ili Ili. I'm also the Red Hill organizer for the Sierra Club of Hawaii and a member of the Oahu Water Protectors. I stand by my written testimony in support of SB 2172 with amendments. And to add on to that, um, this will be reported today that Governor Ige is not committing to permanently decommission the Red Hill fuel tanks. While this was extremely disappointing and aggravating to read, it should really urge us all to move with that much more grit and dedication to protect Oahu's sole source aquifer. 
deflecting the dire need to permanently shut down this decrepit facility that has already and continues to threaten the way of life on Oahu as we know it is a form of complicity and neglect. The Navy has never been able to prove that they, one, can prevent the tanks and supporting pipes and infrastructure from leaking, two, can protect their aquifer, and three, care about Vai, Aina, and the communities on Oahu. The last thing we need is any more reviews and useless improvements, and we definitely don't need double tanking or quote-unquote best available practical technology that doesn't even exist. I urge the communities here today to please heed the amendments as recommended by organization and experts who have been fighting to protect our waters for decades. Please stand firm in your leadership and through the power that constituents have, have bestowed upon you to protect us, those who you serve, and not the war-making agenda that has led us to this crisis today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, submitting late testimony, which is why they're at the end. Uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources Commission on Water Resource Management. Hello. Hello, chairs, vice chairs, uh, and committee members. Kaleo Manuel, deputy with the Water Commission. Apologize for our late testimony, uh, but the department stands on our written testimony in support with comments of this on this measure and we're here to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that's the end of the list of individuals who registered to testify in person. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify on this measure that we missed or um, weren't able to get on? Okay. Seeing none, I'd like to note for the record uh, the written support uh, for this measure from 180 individuals and organizations who submitted on time and 90 individuals and organizations that uh, submitted testimony after the 24 hour limit. There were also three individuals who submitted testimony, written testimony with comments. And so for the committee and the public certification, their written remarks will be um, entered into the record and can be viewed on the legislative website. So that's all the testimony we've received. Uh, members, are there any questions for any of the live testifiers? Okay, I have a question for the Department of Health. Is Kathy still on? I am. Hi, Kathy. So in your uh, testimony, you refer to uh, the underground injection control line. In layman's terms, can you, help, uh, can you help explain that for the committee? I'm going to refer that over to our technical staff who can help us with that. Joanna? Yes, hi. Good afternoon, chairs and members. My name is Joanna. Cito, I am the Environmental Management Division Chief for the Environmental Management Division. Uh, the underground injection control line is a line that was determined by the department as a protective measure for the drinking water aquifers of the state and the islands. Um, in our testimony, we identify the different maps which you can find these lines. Um, and we propose that you, you utilize these lines as the uh, limiting factor for the location of the uh, underground storage tanks. So what does the, it, I guess in real terms, what does the line represent? The line is identifying where um, the department believes that um, in underground injection and control wells can be installed um, on the island with less than impactful um, discharges into the ground. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Members, You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Co-chair Gabbard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've got a question for uh, Eric Wright, or I guess Mr. Lee was representing him. Yes. Correct? Okay. Yeah, in the in Mr. Rice's testimony, uh, could you just elaborate on the? He mentioned that underground storage tanks uh, containing biofuels would also be prohibited under this measure. Could you elaborate on that, please? Sure. Um, as part of the uh, initiative for the state, um, there is a, a a desire to place the existing hydrocarbon fuels with clean fuels or biofuels, and the logical storage for those fuels would be in underground storage tanks. 
uh, to support the retail community. The, the alternative would be above ground storage tanks, which um, brings in other issues regarding the safe operation of that facility due to possible vandalism or terrorism. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, and if there's no objection from the members, I'd like to go into decision making on this measure. Okay, so uh, this is the recommendation for this bill, SB 2172. Uh, I'd like to pass this measure out with uh, the following amendments. The first is uh, to make uh, amendments to the preamble language. The second is uh, in reference to section two of the bill to amend the proximity references to read as follows. Um, Malka of the underground injection control line as defined pursuant to chapter 342E. So it's the, um, that's the recommended definition in the amendments brought forth by the Sierra Club. I'm also gonna accept the Board of Water Supplies amendment to section 2A relating to a permitting for repair and replacement. We're gonna strike replacement and instead, um, and instead add removal. Uh, in section 2B of the bill, we're going to change the date to January 1st, 2023. We're going to strike the 2050 date. Uh, and in section 2C, we're going to amend the definition in the bill of an underground fuel storage tank to read as follows. Uh, any fuel tank or tank facility and associated infrastructure that is or includes field constructed tanks or that has a capacity of over 100,000 gallons. Uh, and because there are a significant number of changes to the bill and, uh, you know, the fact that I think it's pretty clear the nature of um, the broader issues are dynamic, I'm going to recommend that we put a defective date on the bill of January 1st, 2050 to allow further discussion. Members, any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair, uh, voting on SB 2172. Uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Mori Walkie. Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Fafella. Aye. Measure, uh, Chair, your uh, recommendation has been adopted. Thank you very much. Same recommendation for AEN. Uh, Chair votes aye. Senator Nishihara. Nishihara votes aye. Uh, Santa Ocasio. Aye. Santa Rhodes. Aye. Santa Favela. Aye. Motion is adopted. Uh, members, thank you very much. We are adjourned. Uh.